Christ is worth sharing with everybody. Oh, girl. And so it's a book. It's a book about track. It's a book about being an athlete, but it's ultimately a book about a girl who was living in fear her whole life. Okay. And the reality is our salvation is more than gold. It's more than rubies. It's more than money, Instagram followers, all of that. And being able to share that with the world was why I wrote the book. That, that says a lot. I mean, this is a previous uh, Olympiad, but it, it makes sense that from the victories, what do you do with it next? Welcome to The Father Leo Show, where I am dishing out faith, culture, and commentary. And in this episode, I'm going to reveal a bombshell theory as to why the Olympics opening ceremony was such a travesty on so many levels. And I'm just going to tell you why right now. It's because I think the IOC, they're afraid of faith. They're afraid particularly of the Catholic faith. I believe that the woke world is deathly afraid of Christianity, and I think I have receipts to prove it. But before we jump into it, I want to say thank you for watching. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment. You have no idea how that really does help us. And so we really want to encourage you to engage with us. Let us know what you think. Make sure you subscribe subscribe, like, and share, comment, as well as go to our Patreon community because there you get access to great content, some special perks, including my commentary about this whole debacle, but really how God has been given amazing glory and what is a real Catholic response to this whole anti-church movement that we're seeing in all areas of our life. So let's just jump right into it with my commentary on Olympic faith and failures. The Holy Father did come out with a statement regarding the issues of the uh, the the Olympic opening ceremony. I'm not going to belabor the point, but I will just kind of stress one thing. If they claim they were not trying to offend Christians and that Christians somehow got it wrong when looking at their crazy tableaus of craziness, for lack of a better term. Whose fault is that? Is it the fault of the people who are watching that we all collectively assumed that they were a mo making a mockery of the Last Supper? Or is it not the fault of the people who choreographed and staged this whole thing? They obviously didn't do well in trying to communicate what they were trying to do. Because I gotta be honest with you, the opening ceremonies have become something of a spectacle over the years as opposed to, as opposed to what the Olympics really is all about. It's about the inspiration of athletes who happen to have great faith. And so I can just tell you that in doing some of the research for this show, you just see how there is just incredible amounts of faith. I'm going to just kind of show you a small handful of Olympic athletes who were not afraid to talk about their faith. So, for example, Novak Djokovic, the famed tennis player, when asked how he feels, he says, God is great. Listen to this 100-meter gold uh gold award-winning athlete, Julianne Alfred. Listen to what she has to say. Thank you so much. I dreamt of this day. I know my solutions are watching, but I'm just happy it happened. You know, I said to God, I pray to him that whenever I win, I'll give him the glory always. So I thank God for bringing me through, for giving me the strength to come so far. And Father, I give you glory. That's right. Father, I give you glory. I mean, there are just videos after videos of even Christians coming together and singing songs together at the Olympic Village, just like this. You see, this is what athleticism is really about. It's about tapping into the spirit that takes over, in a way, the unruliness of the body. You see, every athlete has to have some inspiration. 
And in this case, I was very impressed with this judo award-winning response. This is kind of interesting to learn that there are so many backstories about Olympic athletes and their faith, which is what helps them to achieve great victory, like this judo award-winning athlete. Larissa Pimenta of Brazil won over her friend Odette to get the bronze medal. Odette came to know Jesus through Larissa. So when Odette saw her friend crying on the floor, she gave her a hug and said, get up, get up, give him the glory, give glory to God. This is the stuff that makes athletes great. It was a bronze medal, wasn't the gold, but come on, that's amazing. And to say to her friend, get up and give glory to God. This is the stuff of athletes. And there's one in particular that really kind of, actually uh, several that, that strike me. I'm going to just share with you a few more of these examples of faith. And I'm going to tell you why when we get to the cultural piece. But for now, let's glory in the fact that we have amazing athletes who are not afraid to give God the glory, including Sydney McLaughlin. Check her out. I'm 24 years old. How much could I really share with the world, you know? But the reality is Christ is worth sharing with everybody. Oh, girl. And so, yeah, I mean, it's a book. It's a book about track. It's a book about being an athlete, but it's ultimately a book about a girl who was living in fear her whole life. Okay. And the reality is our salvation is more than gold. It's more than rubies. It's more than money, Instagram followers, all of that. And being able to share that with the world was why I wrote the book. Yeah, that, that says a lot. I mean, this is a previous uh, Olympiad, but it, it makes sense that from the victories, what do you do with it next? What do you do with it? Well, I can tell you, um, basketball player Steph Curry will post this on his social media because obviously we're not allowed to think that athletes have faith, but this is what he says. He puts on his Instagram po post from Romans 10, 19. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then he says, there's more to me than just this jersey I wear. And that's Christ living inside of me. I love this. And why? Because again, that's the Olympic spirit. It's a spirit of victory over the human condition which is oftentimes broken, which is oftentimes lazy. I mean, like how many times did these people not want to get up and go to practice? I can tell you it's a lot, but it was Christ's victory in that person who gave them the spirit. Um, there's another athlete uh, from Ethiopia, I believe, and her name is Tsisigi Dugumo, and she actually put underneath her name tag, <laughs> A phrase about how Jesus is Lord. And this one is a kind of an even more touching one. This comes from Matthew Steiner. He said, before the 2008 Olympics, his wife died in a car crash. And he promised her before she died that he would win a gold medal for her. And this is kind of the stuff that makes you emotional because, you know, failure after failure, he did eventually, as he's getting older, you're supposed to get weaker as you get older, but after his wife died and just believing he was called to win a gold medal for his wife, he finally picks up the bars and he says this, not me, he says that there were four hands that day and that it was his wife's hands helping to lift up that weight. And it's really beautiful. I mean, this is a cartoon image of it all, but you can see how, mm, gosh, I get emotional just looking at this stuff, but how his wife's death gave him strength to the point where when he got the Olympic ward, he actually showed a picture of his wife. This is really, mm, he's kissing a picture of his wife. Uh, this is the stuff that makes Olympics great. And that's why I think our modern woke culture world is afraid of Christianity because they don't have a spirit of victory in them. Let me explain when I get to my commentary on culture and the Olympics.
When there is not a spirit of God in you, you begin to act as if you are the sole reason why you win. And nothing explains it better than the arrogance of Noah Lyles. You all know him. He's the one who came out and he danced in front of this Olympic stadium filled with people who wanted to see a race, but instead they saw the spectacle of this man bouncing around as if he is somehow God. And what happens? He loses. And that's the sad part because he was favored to win, highly favored. But there seemed to be an arrogance about himself and his physical abilities. Where was the Spirit of God in him? I think, honestly, that's why he lost. Or if you don't have the Spirit of God in you and you think that you're entitled to things, then you're going to act like the coaches from the uh, bronze medal match where you see the coaches from, I can't exactly remember where it's from, but they basically, oh, the Mongolian wrestling coaches, they take off their shirt in protest because of a penalty that was called on the Mongolian athlete. This is not of God. If there is not a spirit of God in you, then who do you do the sport for? You know, I think the, um, the biggest challenge of all about the Olympics is that they tried so desperately to push an agenda before the real Olympic spirit took place. What's the real Olympic spirit? It's people's faith in God, a humble faith that is determined, that's willing to work, that's willing to be disciplined, that's willing to celebrate even losses simply because just because you lose doesn't mean that, that you're a failure. We're going to hear about that in my commentary, which is particularly for Patreon members. And remember that there are many levels of Patreon. All you've got to do is, in a sense, sign up. You don't even have to give any money if you don't want to, but obviously we're appreciative of the support. So I want you to make sure you sign up for Patreon now so you can get to the commentary because I've got some doozies in there that's going to help people really understand what was going on. And I think the minds of the Olympic opening ceremonies organizers, they are deathly afraid of the real heroes. I'm sorry, the performers at the Olympic opening ceremony they're not heroes unless they were heroes. What they did is they put up a bunch of people out there because they wanted to show a diversity, equity, inclusion. All of these are good sounding words, but if you do it without the spirit of God, if you do DEI without DEI, which is of God in Latin, Dei means of God in Latin. If you do DEI without Dei, <laughs> then you're going to get a mess on your hands. And that's exactly what the Olympics opening ceremony was all about. They were just simply hiding behind the greatness of great athletes, all of whom, the majority of whom, have tremendous faith and skills, and they attribute it to God. And what did the Olympic opening ceremonies wanted to do? They wanted to push an agenda. And when you do that, you run into many, many problems. And here's an example of it. And this kind of goes back to a qualifying athletic uh, event prior to the Olympics. I believe it was the Somali Athletic Federation's controversy in their choice to select an untrained athlete because that was a niece of the head of the federation for the Somali Athletic Association. And this person did a miserable job. In fact, broke a record of being the slowest ever in the 100 meter race. And another example of it is, yes, I'm going to say it. It's the Ray Gunn breakdancing debacle. Okay, I'm just going to tell you. I think I could have gotten an Olympic gold medal because back in the day I had moves that were better than the gold medalist breakdancing female category. I would have won, I think, a gold medal had I just identified as a woman. But 
this DEI approach without Dei, without being of God, remember that's the Latin genitive for of God, Dei, is why we had such a sad demonstration. And, and why? Because DEI is not of God. Diversity is a good thing. We even hear about it from St. Paul. We have multiple gifts, but they all have to work together as one body and they have to come from God. Equity can sound good, but equity assumes that everyone is exactly the same. Do you know what that is? That is everybody gets a trophy mentality. We're going to hear about that, particularly from the Olympic Committee for Australia. And this inclusion, great. Let's make sure we include people. But guess what? You have the Paralympics. You know, that is if we really wanted to include people with conditions or disabilities, quote unquote, because I don't know what to call it anymore. If somebody has a condition that prevents them from running the race the same way an Olympiad who doesn't have that condition runs the race, why don't we have them compete? A Paralympic athlete compete with someone in just the quote unquote normal Olympics. Why not? Well, I'll tell you why because it wouldn't be very inclusive. And so you're seeing how DEI in the Olympics is the reason why they wanted to push this transgender confused mentality and try to normalize it. This is the greatest struggle right now is that we're trying to be so woke that we're literally falling asleep at the wheel. And the problem is perpetuated by people who think that they're doing a good thing when they put Ray Gunn out there, this failed 36-year-old breakdancing instructor. <laughs> what kills me is I have to ask, was this doctor, professor who goes by Ray Gunn, was she culturally appropriating breakdancing? I mean, she's a white woman from Australia. What would she know about the origins of the hood where breakdancing kind of grew in response to the battles between gangs? Instead of wanting to fight each other, they would dance against each other. I'd love to bring breakdancing back, but not this way. I mean, Ray Gunn's, Ray Gunn's performance was less than stellar. It was, as many people say, an embarrassment. They, there are tremendously funny and unfortunately insulting things that this poor woman has to now endure. That's not the spirit of the Olympics. So I don't fault Ray Gunn for getting out there and trying her best. I fault the Australian Olympic Committee for allowing her to get up there when she was completely unqualified, but she's a DEI athlete. There's no doubt about it. And here's the problem with this whole agenda that has been tried, that, that the Olympic Committee is trying to shove down everyone's throats simply because they know that the real athletes, they don't care about this stuff. They just care about doing their best. And in many cases, giving glory to God. But this is what this AOC Olympic organizer for Australia has to say. And I got to be honest with you, it's embarrassing. On social media, with trolls and keyboard warriors and taking those comments and giving them airtime has been really disappointing. If you don't know Rachel's story, in 2008, she was locked in a room crying, being involved in a male-dominated sport as the only woman, and it took great courage for her to continue on and fight for her opportunity to participate in a sport that she loved and, it, and that got her to winning the Olympic qualifying event to be here in Paris. She is the best break dancer, female, that we have for Australia. And Ray Gunn is an absolutely loved member of this Olympic team. She has represented the Olympic team, the Olympic spirit, with great enthusiasm. And I, and I absolutely love her courage. I love her, her character. And I feel very disappointed for her that she has come under the yeah. attack that she has. Yes, I am very sorry that she had to go under the attack as well. But you got to admit, if she's not good, 
and all you've got to do is do a quick Google video search of female breakdancers. They are pretty impressive. Put her performance up to that and say, do we want to do it? Okay, well then it's up to you. Because if it's her courage that we're trying to award, then yeah, she should get a gold medal. But if it's her performance, then she's going to have to suffer the consequences. You know, I, I think this is just the reality that the Olympic Committee has this growing DEI mentality that wants to claim everyone should be respected, which they should, and there's no disagreement by me, but they're equating respect with not being under the scrutiny of judges who are looking at technical skills and abilities. And basically, this DEI mentality is going to turn the Olympics into like a kid's sporting event where everybody gets a trophy. And I'm sorry. Thankfully, that's not what the Olympic spirit's all about. So I'm going to actually share with you in my commentary what I think the Olympic spirit is really all about. But I can say this, the Olympics, they're afraid in many ways. Well, not everyone, the Olympics. But the people who were promoting that debacle of, <laughs> of an opening ceremony, I think that they were afraid of Christianity because you can see that these amazing gold medal, these medaled athletes, these athletes, athletes who are just rising to the top and being interviewed, the majority of them are giving glory to God. Not all. But here's where we're going to learn something as Catholics. How do we approach the Olympics now in my commentary, which is specifically for our Patreon members. So if you haven't signed up for our Patreon community, make sure you do so. There are many levels in which you can participate. And as always, I hope you got something out of this. God bless you. Stay hungry for God. But now for my commentary.